So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming an American hero, Brigadier General Robert Spaulding. I'd like to say um, congratulations to Don and Sally, you know, listening to that um, heartfelt um, tribute uh, shows there's a lot of love in this room, a lot of community, and, and that's, what, um, that's what this talk is going to be about. It's going to be about Americans and, and taking care of our, uh, our people. First, a little bit, um, I'd like to say, um, you know, a shout out to the NBA. Uh, has anybody read the New York Times article today? I, I couldn't ask for a better uh, advertisement for my book because it, it demonstrates precisely um, why I'm here talking. You know, I could have stayed in the Air Force. I, I, um, it's actually almost 27 years. It would have been 27 in March if I had stayed in. And actually the Air Force wanted me to continue, but uh, I thought it was important that I get out and tell the story because, quite frankly, the national security strategy as it currently reads and the trade um, and, and uh, tariffs that are going on. I had a lot of responsibility uh, uh, for that. And so I have, I, sh I have a responsibility to articulate what's behind that, and that's what this is about. This book is about really an executive summary, if you will, of the, of the last six years of my life uh, where I focused on um, Chinese and U.S. strategic competition. And, um, you know, I hope you, I hope you will get some lessons out of it. And what this talk will do is try to summarize uh, what, what the book, the thesis of the book. Uh, I'll let you know it's a nonpartisan book. So I don't really care if you're Democrat or Republican. Uh, quite frankly, I try to um, hold true to the oath of office I took back in 1991 to support and defend the Constitution. There's a lot of talk about supporting and defending the Constitution today, but um, there's a lot, I can tell you there's a lot of Americans in the bureaucracy that are doing just that. I am uh, a member of the uh, deep state, and so if you want to uh, ask some questions, uh, ask some questions about what's going on, what's really going on, what your um, uh, unelected representatives in the federal bureaucracy are doing right now in, to support the national security strategy that came out in December of <coughs> 2017, I'll be more than uh, happy to answer it. And we'll not have anything to do with um, what you see in the New York Times or the media or tweets. It'll be about what bureaucrats today are doing to protect Americans with regard to this issue, which is, quite frankly, um, an existential issue. It's an existential issue for our freedoms. And if you look at what happened with the NBA, a general manager of the Houston Rockets basically uh, tweeting about support for the protests in Hong Kong, or which, which are really about freedom. And the NBA as an organization centering and that person almost losing their job, and then you have um, an idea of what the book uh, is about. First of all, when you, when you pick up the book, uh, and then on the cover it says China, you have to understand what China uh, represents in, in the context of the book and what I have been looking at for the last six years. So I'll take you back to 2002. In 2002, I was chosen to be one of three Olmsted scholars from the Air Force. And an Olmsted scholar uh, is a person that um, is selected to go out, uh, learn a language, and live for a couple years in a foreign country. Of course, uh, I hadn't told my wife I'd applied for this program. <laughs> and so in April of 2001, I come home and I say, uh, I tell her that um, we have to move in two weeks. Not only are we not getting out of the Air Force uh, next year, as I promise, we're actually going to stay another 10 years. And oh, by the way, we're going to China to live for two years. Needless to say, we're still married. <laughs> but uh, we, so we lived there in Shanghai from 2002 to 2004. And I, I'll tell you, we, we took our two sons, two, four and seven. And it was the most tremendous time I've ever had. You know, it was really a wonderful experience. Uh, I got to know the people, the culture, the history, the geography, the language. I spoke fluently uh, Chinese, uh, thanks to a year at Defense Language Institute in Monterey. And it was so wonderful that I told my wife in 2004 when we left, uh, I want to, when I retire from the Air Force, I want to go back. I want to work in uh, China. I want to start a business. 
and I want to do what clearly all my neighbors were doing at the time who worked for Fortune 500 companies, which is, uh, you know, essentially uh, get wealthy. <laughs> it's the American dream. It's also the Chinese dream. <laughs>